Knott's Landing, a TV series that captivated audiences in 1979, unfolds the lives of four families in a Californian cul-de-sac. As you revisit this classic, brace yourself for an array of funny, shocking, and poignant moments that lie ahead. When did you first encounter the drama that unfolded in those tightly knit neighborhoods? Or perhaps, are there lesser known facts and anecdotes about the series that intrigue you? The series, known for its gripping narrative, explores the intricacies of relationships against the backdrop of suburban life. As you delve into the episodes, keep an eye out for the unexpected twists and turns that await. Now, we want to know what's your most cherished memory or personal experience linked to this iconic show. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Get ready for a journey through the lives of these families and don't miss out on the chance to share your own experiences. There's more to Knott's Landing than meets the eye. Stay tuned for the funny, shocking, and sad facts that lie ahead. Keep watching! Knott's Landing, a television series that premiered in 1979, left an enduring impact on popular culture, solidifying its status as a notable piece of television history. Initially conceived as a spin-off from Dallas, it quickly found its own identity and carved a niche for itself. Throughout its 14-season run, the show garnered a devoted fan base and critical acclaim. During its time, it received widespread appreciation for its unique blend of drama and character-driven narratives. The portrayal of suburban life and intricate interpersonal relationships resonated with audiences, making it a cultural touchstone. The struggles, triumphs, and complex dynamics of the characters captivated viewers, contributing to the show's lasting impact. The reception went beyond the small screen, sparking a wave of spin-offs, including novels and made-for-television movies. These extensions allow Wood fans to delve deeper into the lives of their favorite characters, sustaining interest even after the series concluded. Merchandise, such as DVDs and memorabilia, further cemented its presence in popular culture, offering fans tangible connections to the show. Its influence extended into the broader entertainment landscape, inspiring adaptations and references in subsequent television series and films. The legacy is not just measured in viewership numbers, but in the enduring mark it left on storytelling conventions and the portrayal of domestic life on television. In conclusion, Knott's Landing stands as a testament to the enduring impact a well-crafted and character-driven television series can have on popular culture. The ripple effect is evident in the spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations that followed, showcasing the lasting imprint of this 1979 TV series. Knott's Landing, a 1979 television series, boasted a talented team of creators, producers, and directors who played pivotal roles in shaping its success. David Jacobs, the visionary behind the show, crafted a compelling narrative set in a suburban backdrop, unraveling the lives of its characters with precision. The production was orchestrated by a dynamic team, with Michael Feilerman taking charge as the producer. His keen understanding of storytelling and knack for character development contributed significantly to the show's longevity and popularity. The directorial helm was expertly guided by talents such as David Mosinger and Nicholas Escaro, whose creative choices enriched the visual and narrative dimensions. The cast, a mix of seasoned actors and rising stars, brought their characters to life with finesse. Michelle Lee, portraying Karen Fairgate, anchored the ensemble with her remarkable portrayal of resilience and strength. Joan Van Ark as Valene Ewing added depth with her nuanced performance, embodying the emotional complexity of her character. The casting process was meticulous, with the creators handpicking actors who could authentically embody the intricacies of their respective roles. Interestingly, Kevin Dobson, initially considered for a different role, eventually assumed the character of Mac McKenzie, showcasing the unpredictability of the casting journey. Other notable actors, such as Ted Shackelford, Donna Mills, and William Devane, contributed significantly to the show's success, each bringing a unique flavor to the tapestry of storytelling. The chemistry among the cast members was palpable, creating a captivating on-screen dynamic that resonated with audiences. In conclusion, the show owes its success not only to the engaging narrative, but also to the brilliant minds behind the scenes and the talented cast that breathed life into the characters. Its enduring legacy is a testament to the collaborative efforts of creators, producers, directors, and actors. In the early stages of Knott's Landing, Ted Shackelford's character underwent an alcoholic storyline, setting the stage for Linda Gray's similar plotline on the parent show Dallas, aligning with the aftermath of Sigi's murder. 
Following Don Murray's exit from the series, producers opted to keep Michelle Lee's character single for a year. Subsequently, Kevin Dobson was brought in as her second husband, remaining on the show until its cancellation. Donna Mills took charge of her character Abby Ewing's appearance, claiming to have done all her own makeup. Mills later capitalized on her expertise, launching the Eyes Have It and Eye Makeup brand and tutorials in the 1980s. All sourced information is from a reputable website, ensuring reliability in the details presented. In its initial seasons, Knott's Landing shared narrative connections with its parent show, Dallas. Characters Gary and Val, central to the series, made a final appearance in the 1991 Dallas finale, offering an alternative glimpse into their lives had JR never existed. During the 82-83 season, the departure of Lisa Hartman Black's character, Siji Dunn, prompted viewer demand for her return. Responding to letters, the show reintroduced her in the following season as Kathy Geary, a look-alike to Siji. Steve Cahan, having portrayed a character in Knott's Landing, later took on the role of Nick Morrison in Behringer's, another Lorimer Productions project. Diana Good, Behringer's creator, served as the executive story consultant for Knott's Landing, contributing to multiple episodes. These insights into the series' interplay with Dallas and the viewer-driven return of Lisa Hartman Black's character highlight the intricate connections within the Lorimer Productions project. In 1979, Knott's Landing emerged as a distinct television series with episodes like Ties That Bind, Down Came the Rain, and Washed the Spider Out Part 2, My Firstborn, House of Cards, The Price, A Death in the Family, Call Waiting, and My Kingdom for a Horse, notable for the absence of Gary Ewing and Baleen Ewing. These installments carved a unique niche detached from its parent series, Dallas. Set in the iconic cul-de-sac Seaview Circle, Knott's Landing utilized Crystal Air Place in Granada Hills, located about 20 miles from the Pacific Ocean. Despite the visual illusion in the opening credits, the exterior shots featured actual houses on Crystal Air Place, while the interiors were crafted on a studio soundstage, skillfully blending reality and fiction. Before joining the cast, Kevin Dobson collaborated with Joan Van Ark on an episode of Kojak, where Van Ark portrayed the female detective joining the team, much to Kojak's dismay. These pre knots landing connections add an intriguing layer to the actor's journey in the world of television. From episodes with distinct absences to the cleverly crafted cul-de-sac and pre knots landing collaborations, these facets illuminate the series' depth and connectivity, contributing to its enduring charm and narrative allure. In Knott's Landing's early seasons, the producers originally intended for Sid Fairgate to survive a car crash, but actor Don Murray's request for contract release led to the character's demise. Murray later expressed regret about his decision to leave the series. Noteworthy for launching the careers of several celebrities, Knott's Landing featured talents like Ted Shackelford, Lisa Hartman Black, Hal Berry, Billy Bob Thornton, Alec Baldwin, Marsha Cross, Nicolette Sheridan, Brian Austin Green, and Gary Sinise. M. Patrick McKenzie's first name is Marion, a detail sourced from a reputable website. These facts shed light on the show's significant impact on the entertainment industry. Bruce Greenwood and William Devane, both actors who portrayed U.S. President John F. Kennedy, shared more than their presidential roles. They worked together on the long-running show Knott's Landing. The series, spanning 14 seasons, featured a diverse cast, with Michelle Lee, Ted Shackelford, and Joan Van Ark being the only actors to appear in every season. Pat Peterson closely followed, missing only the final two seasons. A noteworthy post-series connection occurred almost a year after its conclusion. Kevin Dobson and Nicolette Sheridan attended the funeral of Telly Savalas, who had passed away in January 1994. Dobson, who had a previous co-starring role with Savalas on Kojak, played a significant role in Sheridan's life as her real-life stepfather. The actor's commitment to the show extended beyond the screen. Dobson, who joined later on, became part of its enduring legacy. Additionally, the cast's attendance at Telly Savalas' funeral showcased the real-life bonds formed during and after the show. In the realm of television, it remains a significant part of entertainment history with its actors leaving lasting impressions both on and off the screen. These insights into their connections and post-series relationships add depth to the narrative of its impact on the entertainment industry. 
In the early years of the series, actor Don Murray decided to leave, citing a desire to pursue other projects. Some sources suggest it may have been influenced by a contract dispute. This departure marked a shift in the show's narrative, prompting adjustments to the character dynamics. Before the creation of Dallas, show creator David Jacobs initially pitched a concept similar to Knott's Landing. Networks sought a more saga-like approach, leading Jacobs to develop Dallas. When Dallas achieved success, the network sought a spin-off, and Jacobs revisited his earlier idea, integrating Gary and Val Ewing's family into the new show. In the third season, the character Sid Fairgate's real first name was revealed to be William. This detail adds a layer of insight into the character's identity, expanding on the show's exploration of its ensemble cast. All information presented here is sourced from a reputable website, ensuring reliability in the details provided. These aspects of Knott's Landing's history shed light on its evolution and the decisions that shaped its trajectory.